Welcome back everyone. This video is for the pre-calc class, section 9.3, geometric sequences. So real quick, uh, just doing a few examples here. A geometric sequence has a common ratio between its terms. So I have three examples right here. And by definition, I see A1, A2, A3, so my terms in a sequence. I know that if I divide them out, I'll get a common ratio. So if I look at each one of these, okay, if I take, you know, 4 divided by 2, I get 2. 8 divided by 4, I get 2. 16. So my common ratio here is 2. 36 divided by 12, 108 divided by 36, and then finally 324 divided by 108. I can see here that my common ratio winds up being 3. And then I finally have negative 1 third, 1 ninth, negative 1 27th, 1 over 81. If I take 1 ninth divided by negative 1 third, or as some of you are probably seeing, isn't it just like a multiple? Yeah, you can think of it that way as well. Uh, if you look here, I know that just to get from this term to this term, I know that I have to multiply by negative 1 third. And if I divide that out, 1 ninth divided by negative 1 third, I'll actually wind up with, again, dividing by fraction, same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'll have 1 ninth times negative 3 over 1, and that does reduce to negative 1 third. So same thing here. Again, you can look at this as being multiplied by 3. But again, the common ratio, you're dividing out the terms. So what you need to know in terms of geometric is the formula. The nth term formula of a geometric sequence follows this formula right here. The nth term is the first term times the ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. And so a couple things you got to take note here, that if you wanted to know the fifth term or the ninth term, as I have it here, let's say I've got a to the ninth, and that would make this exponent the eighth. If I wanted to know the fifth term, that would make this exponent the fourth. Okay, so you need to know that uh, looking ahead when you're doing those kind of problems. All right, so I've got some really basic problems right here to start with. Okay, and that is just looking here, find the nth term of the sequence for 5, 15, and 45. So now the first thing you've got to find, as always, is the common ratio. So you need to double check and make sure that. The ratio goes throughout the sequence and making sure that it's an, a geometric all the way through. So you can see here 15 divided by 5 is 3, 45 divided by 15 is 3. So that tells me again now, just starting off, that your common ratio is 3. And then what else do you need to know? Because there's your common ratio right there. I also need to know the first term. Well, I got three terms. 5 is my first term. So I know that the nth term of that sequence is 5, 3 to the n minus 1. Okay, so as I've stated in class, once you know the formula, you can find out anything you need to know. If I need to know the fifth term, you plug in 5. If I need to know the you know first four terms, you plug in 1, 2, 3, 4. If you needed to know the... Uh, tenth partial sum, you can use your calculator, and going from 1 to 10, and you would use the formula of 5, 3 to the n minus 1, and use the summation key on your calculator to get that. And if I did that real quick here, I'd pull up my calculator, and you could see that I would do alpha F2, and pull up the summation. Well, I've got to clear that out. That came out wrong there. And I would pull up the summation. I got to use x's here from 1 to 10. And I got to make sure everything stays inside there. So I got 5, 3 raised to the x minus 1. And you'll see your summation right there of 147,620. All right, and then going back here, I'm going to look at the other sequence that I have, okay, so it says find the nth term uh, given the following, and we can see here that I, the one in red, I got 20 
21, 22.05, 23.15, 25. When I divide these out, okay, I'm going to see that my common ratio here is 1.05. Okay, so with 1.05 winding up as my uh, common ratio, now, again, I'll know that my nth term is 20 for my first term, 1.05 and minus 1. Your common ratio is not always going to be a whole number. It could be a fraction, could be a decimal. Either way, you know, it's not a big deal. Now that we know the nth term, we can answer anything we know. All right, so now what happens if the terms are not in order? Find the nth term given that the third term is 10 and that the seventh term is 62,500. Now, this is the example we did in class. Okay, so what I'm going to go by is, what I know is, I know the formula. I know that a sub n is a sub 1 r to the n minus 1. If I apply this to the third term, the third term is a sub 1 r squared, and that's got to equal 100. And I know that the seventh term is a sub 1 r to the sixth equals 62,500. So I actually have a system here, but I don't have a linear system like I did with the arithmetic ones. I have this system. So what I need to do is some basic algebra here of some just substitution. I'm going to solve both of these equations for a1. They both have an A1 right here and right here. So I'm going to just do some simple algebra to solve for A1. So A1 is going to be 100 over R squared. And here, A1 is going to be 62,500 divided by R to the sixth. Now, basic algebra tells us if they're both equal to A1, then I can set them equal to each other. So if I take 100 divided by r squared and 62,500 over r to the sixth. Now I can cross multiply. I'll wind up with 100 r to the sixth equals 62,500 r squared. So the first thing I'm going to do to simplify this, I'm going to divide by r squared. So if I divide this by r squared, that's going to give me r to the fourth. And then I'm going to divide by 100. So when I do that, I'm going to get r to the fourth is equal to 625. And now, you need to know the fourth root of 625. So if I pull up my calculator and I go to my math menu, I have right here, choosing number 5, I'm going to change this to the fourth root of 625, which I'm sure some of you already know, is 5. Okay, so now doing that, I know now again that r is equal to 5. Now I'm not done. I know that r is 5, but I got to find my first term. Well, I got two equations right here that are solved for the first term. So I'm just going to use that top equation right there. I'm going to have 100 divided by 5 squared. So that's, that's 100 over 25. So that tells me 4 is my first term. I know the first term. I know the ratio. That means then that my nth term formula is the first term times the ratio to the n minus 1. And that allows me again to figure out anything I need to know. Need to know the first five terms, plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I need to know a summation, I'm going to use this formula with the summation key in my calculator. Okay? All right, let's see what else we got here. We can try another one. And I believe I went across here. So let's see where we got. And we have find the nth term if the fourth term is 125 and the tenth term is 125 over 64. So same kind of problem. Okay, so let's do this one in blue. I know the fourth term 
a sub 1 r cubed that's 125 I know that the tenth term a sub 1 r to the ninth that's 125 over 64 I'm going to solve both for a1 okay so I know that a1 is going to be equal to 125 over r cubed and a1 here is going to be 125 over 64 r to the ninth I'm going to set them both equal to each other okay so I'm going to have 125 over r cubed equals 125 over 64 r to the ninth and again I'm going to cross multiply 125 times 64 that's going to be 8000 r to the ninth equaling 125 r cubed divide by r cubed that's going to give me r to the sixth here so I have r to the sixth and I'm going to divide by 8000 I'll have 125 over 8000 so I need to take the sixth root of this I can go back and use my calculator and you'll find out that r is a half so I'm going to use that half and I'm going to go all the way up to here and get me a1 and I know that I got 125 divided by well one half cubed that's one eighth and then dividing by an eighth the same as multiplying by eight there so I know that a1 is going to be a thousand which then allows me to get now my nth term formula of a sub n is a thousand times one half to the n minus one and again I can use this formula to solve for anything that it's asking me to do all right last in this section is the sum of a finite geometric sequence now once again I could put this in my calculator just like that I pull up my calculator and I go alpha f2 here and I, I pull up the summation I use x's from 1 to 12 and I put that whole formula in here of 4 times 0 0.3 and I raise that to the x minus 1 you're gonna see that I get 5.714 okay now knowing that okay so 5.714 they're saying that instead of doing the summation an alternative way is to do this right here I take the first term 1 minus the ratio raised to the n divided by 1 minus r so if I did that with what I have here I can also write this as now you gotta recognize that is a1 and that is your r right there so if I write this as 4 1 minus 0 0.3 raised to the 12th the 12 came from right here divided by 1 minus 0 0.3 and I put this in my calculator guess what I'm gonna get you're gonna get the exact same thing so take a look I put in four parentheses I use my little fraction bar of 1 minus 0 0.3 raised to the twelfth divided by one minus zero point three and I get the exact same thing so hopefully that helps you out that's just a quick lesson uh, of what we did in class for geometric sequences and that was our honors pre-calc and regular pre-calc for section nine point three thanks for tuning in if you haven't subscribed to my page yet please do so